Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of orthographic projection. So in this video we're going to look at the difference between first angle and third angle projection. Uh, we're going to begin first of all by looking at how to identify whether you're dealing with a first angle or a third angle drawing. So here we have an object and it's represented here in first angle and here in third angle. Now the object is going to be represented in exactly the same way. The, the same views are going to be given in both views but what's going to change is going to be the orientation of those views relative to our front elevation. So if we imagine looking into the front of the object here's our front elevation in first angle and here it is in third angle. Now let's go and say look at our object from the top. So from above the object in first angle we can see our plan view is appearing here below our front elevation which is our primary view. Um, in third angle however our plan view appears above the object. So in, in spite of being the same view, this is below it, whereas this appears above our front elevation. And the same thing applies when it comes to our end views as well. If I want to look in from the right hand side of the object here, here I'll be looking at this kind of backwards L, it appears in my on the left hand side of my front elevation in first angle, whereas in third angle it appears over here on the right hand side. And the same thing applies then looking in from the left, it will appear on the right hand side of my front elevation in first angle, whereas it will appear on the left hand side in third angle. And the differences can actually be summar summarized like so. So in first angle, if we're looking from the, re the left, it appears in the right. If we're looking from the right, it appears in the left. If we're looking from the top, it appears below the object. And um, so we're looking through the object and our image is cast to the far side of it. That's the idea behind first angle. Whereas in third angle, if I'm looking from the left, my image appears in the left. If I'm looking from the right, it appears in the right. If I'm looking from above, it appears above the object. Um, you may also have noticed these little symbols um, on your drawings. And these little symbols here, bes right beside your title block, will represent which of your two conventions you're dealing with, whether first angle or third angle. So we have a little trapezoid shape here, and to the left of these two circles will represent first angle, whereas if it's represented to the right hand side, it represents third angle. So it doesn't matter what language you speak, if you look, see those symbols, you'll be able to identify which of the uh, conventions you're actually uh, using. So that's just how to identify um, which of um, the conventions that you're given, say. Uh, what we want to do then is just have a little look at the background of our uh, first and third angle. So to start with, both first and third angle are both orthographic projections. That is to say, they give an undistorted view of the object, and it's a multi-view um, representation of it. So not like one 3D view, It's uh, each of our views are broken up into plan elevation and end view. Uh, both of which are used to represent working drawings, so the function of both first and third angle is exactly the same. Um, whether you're using first angle or third angle will actually depend on what part of the world you're in. First angle is the standard projection when it comes to, say, Europe, um, whereas third angle then is a standard projection in the likes of America and Canada. And generally speaking, depending on where you learn graphics, that's going to determine which of the conventions you actually use. So for example, if you were in Russia, uh, it, the standard projection system in Russia is first angle, whereas if you were in Japan, third angle would be the standard projection you're, you're going to be using there. In fact, if you were in Great Britain, uh, you could be using either first or third angle. Both first and third angle are standard uh, in Britain. Um, Historically speaking, first angle was the original um, projection system. Uh, it was devised by a man called Gaspard Monge, a, a Frenchman, and when he devised orthographic projection, he devised it as first angle projection. It wasn't until around World War I, say in America, where a lot of manufacturing companies began using third angle projection that it caught on in America, and they developed that as their standard projection system. So a lot of the time it depends on if you were uh, say if you're in a company that works predominantly with European country uh, companies or with American companies and um, that will determine which of the standards that you'll see uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, let's then have a look at I suppose where each of our first and third angle where it comes from or what's the difference in concept beside behind the two systems. Um, if you can imagine here we have a vertical plane like so, so like a sheet of glass and here we have a horizontal plane. Well, where the two planes cross give us this X shape here and it divides it up into four quadrants and 
it's in the first quadrant here is where we get our first angle projection, literally the first angle that we see here. Um, whereas it's in the third quadrant is where we're getting our third angle. So it's our third angle that we have here, like so. And basically uh, what we're doing is we're placing an object either in the first quadrant or the third quadrant. We don't really concern ourselves with the second or fourth quadrant. We just really worry about the first or the third. And if I want to say look at the object in from the right hand side here, well because in the first quadrant my plane of reference is on the left hand side, that's where my image is going to be projected. Likewise if I want to look from above the object, well my horizontal plane is below the object, so we're casting it like a shadow um, underneath the object. Whereas with third angle, um, if I want to look in from above, because the plane of reference is above the object, that's where my image will be. If I want to look in from the right, well the plane of reference is on the right hand side, so that's where my image will be. And that's where the difference between first and third angle actually comes from. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can imagine or kind of uh, the, uh, the different systems. Um, if you imagine here's first angle and here's our third angle. Well, both systems work on three basic components. We have a viewing direction, we have an object, and we have a plane of reference. And it's the order of those components um, that determine whether we're dealing with first or third angle. So in first angle, we can imagine, here's our viewing direction represented by a man looking in, in a particular direction. Here we have our object, and here's our plane of reference. And the idea is that essentially we're shining a torch and we're casting our image l the same way that we would cast a shadow onto a screen. So our plane of reference here represents a screen. And because it's orthographic projection, whatever direction we're looking in at, our lines of projection are going to be parallel with that. So that's casting our image onto our screen like a shadow. Um, whereas in third angle, if you can imagine the plane of reference between you and the object. So instead of casting it like a shadow, you can imagine our observer here sketching whatever it is he sees onto a sheet of glass between him and the object. Um, so same thing applies with our lines of projection. This time they're going to be pulled towards us. They're still going to be parallel with our viewing direction, but they're moving towards us. And that's the predominant difference between um, the two systems. So what we're going to do next then is just have a look at that in action, say in 3D here. So here we have an object and we're going to represent it in first angle, here we have it in third angle. So if we just compare the two different systems, let's first of all get our front elevation. So standing in front of the object, in first angle our plane of reference is going to appear behind it, whereas in third angle it's going to appear you between you and the object. In first angle we're casting our image like a shadow onto our plane of reference, whereas in third angle we're pulling it towards ourselves and tracing it onto our sheet of glass. So that's our front elevation like so. So just for convenience I'll just fade out that a little bit at the moment. And let's go and get our plan view. So looking from the top of the object, we're going to look through the object and our plane of reference is going to be below it in first angle, whereas it's going to be between you and the object in third angle. Um, we're going to cast our image down like a shadow in first angle. We're going to pull our image up and trace it onto a sheet of glass in third angle. Um, so there's our two plan views. Same thing applies if I was underneath the object looking from below. Um, our plane of reference is above the object in first angle whereas it's below the object in third. Again, casting it like a shadow versus tracing it uh, onto a sheet of glass. Um, and exactly the same thing applies then for our end views. So if I'm looking from the left, our plane of reference appears on the right, whereas it appears on the left for third angle. We're casting it like a shadow versus pulling it towards ourselves and tracing on our sheet of glass. Um, exactly the same then looking from the right hand side, our plane of reference at the left here versus the right here casting it like a shadow versus pulling it towards ourselves and tracing on our sheet of glass. Um, so that's each of our primary views gotten there. Um, there's one other difference then when it comes to our first and our third angle, and it's how we hinge out our object. Um, in both cases, we're hinging our object from our front elevation. But in our first angle, our front elevation is behind the object like so, whereas in our third angle, our front elevation is in front of the object. So for first angle, what we're doing is we're hinging our object flat and we're pull, hinging it backwards onto our front elevation, whereas in third angle we're hinging it towards ourselves, like so. So same thing applies with our end views, we're hinging them back in first angle, whereas we're hinging it forwards in third angle, because of our difference in position for our front elevation. Um, so that's, I suppose, where each of our um, difference in views come from. And we can see the difference in orientation. Here's our view looking in from the left hand side, here it is represented in our third angle. So to finish with, we're just going to have a look at the exact same thing, but we're going to see it as you would see it on your sheet of paper. 
So we're going to begin with each of our first and third angle of the same object f with our front elevation. So like before, from a here's our plan view now here, looking from above the object, there's our screen below the object, here's our sheet of glass between you and the object. So the first thing we're going to do is project our image onto our screen like so, or versus pulling it towards yourself. And then we're going to hinge that down and project it down for our plan view. Um, here we do the same thing in our third angle. So here's our plan view below the object, our plan view above the object. Same thing applies looking in for the end view. So I'm looking in from the left hand side. So here's my screen going to appear on the right hand side for first angle. There it is in elevation and here it is looking from above in plan view. Same difference applies in third angle only it's between you and the object. So in first angle we're going to project like a shadow. In elevation there's the same thing in plan view and here we are pulling it towards ourselves in our third angle. And now to create our third angle we want to connect our view so we're going to draw in a 45 degree line and we're going to project our views and um, to give us our end view and that's the equivalent of hinging our object back like so giving us our end view looking in from the left hand side. Exactly the same thing when it comes to third angle we're going to draw our 45 degree lines this time upwards like so but we're going to still project onto it and give us our end view like so. Um, exactly the same thing looking in from the right hand side there is our plane on the left hand side in first angle, there's our plane on the right hand side in third angle. Um, like before, project onto the plane, we're doing the same thing in both of our first and third angle, and then we're going to hinge it to give us our end view. Same thing applies in third angle, like so. And lastly then, looking from below the object, again, what we'll see will appear above the object in a first angle, and it will appear below the object in third angle. So there we have our connecting of our views, giving us our hinged um, image from below the object, where here we have it connecting our views, giving us our hinged image from below in third angle. So that's each of our views gotten here like that. And we can see that's our orientation in first angle. There's our orientation in third angle. So very, very similar, only depending on which view. And like we said before, if you're ever in any doubt of which one you're dealing with, if you're given a drawing, always look for the plan view. It should always appear below the front elevation in first angle, and it should always appear above the front elevation in third angle. So that's how you'll know which one you're dealing with. Um, our next video then is going to be looking at um, the symbol um, for our first angle and third angle and where that comes from. So it's a very short video, um, but hopefully this has been some help to you. And stay tuned for more videos. Um, thank you very much.